scattered across the countryside of Ireland are the remains of over 1,000 stone monuments, tombs and burial sites. Some are over 5,000 years old, predating Stonehenge and the Egyptian pyramids, built with stones weighing up to 150 metric tons. These megalithic burial sites are still shrouded in mystery today. We don't really understand the way that the dead were processed necessarily throughout this, this, this kind of period. We don't really understand what's going on within that social world of theirs. I think the social world is a really important way of thinking about this. We have hard evidence of lots of things, but trying to put that into some kind of how people live their lives is very difficult. It's one thing to know about the structures of the tombs, but there's still so much that we can learn about the people that built them. The assumption is they're a special part of society, but we don't know if that is ranking or you know social stratification in a sense we'd be familiar with today, or if different uh, qualities were valued and revered by past societies. And are the people who built the monuments and deposited those human remains, are they part of that special group? Are they different? You know, how do those integrate? In this part of the world, we tend to think about megalithic tombs as ranging from the Neolithic through to, to the Bronze Age. And we're talking about tombs made from, from large stones, some of which are, are local, some of which are brought from long distances away. They were commonly thought to be the resting places of fleeing heroes like Dermot and Grania, or they were Druid's altars. And while we might have moved a bit beyond that and recognised that they're not kind of contemporary in time, they're much older, thousands of years older, I think we're still uh, grappling with, you know, their core meaning. I've always been drawn to the, uh, the tombs to really get that sense of history. There's a, a sense of presence and time going back before it's comprehensible. New Grange is built in a particular way with this light box, which is above the main passage. And what that means is that when the winter solstice is sunrise, the light comes in the light box and spreads like a finger down the passage uh, at New Grange for a period of a few minutes uh, and illuminates the, the rear part of the chamber. So that's, that's the winter solstice is sunrise but they were certainly involved in marking the seasons in one way or another. And you could argue that it's part of the ritual of the year. So it's the point when kind of the old year dies and, you, and the new year begins. So there's a death, a death and rebirth element to that. Well, they do contain human remains. That definitely wasn't their only or their sole function. So they likely had a variety of, of purposes in society linked to things like the, the seasonal cycle, the agricultural year, uh, community, ancestor worship, all the sorts of things. These monuments are built over maybe 1500 years. So if you think of a, a cathedral today, a modern church or a cathedral today, and something, you know, that's from 400 AD, kind of early, early Roman period, that's the sort of time difference we're talking about. So I think we have to assume that attitudes to these sites and these monuments would change over those centuries or over those millennia and different people and different motivations were in play. Once upon a time we were very confident that we knew the order in which these tombs were built. And we, you know, we'd say, oh, portal tombs, then court tombs, then passage tombs. That doesn't really hold in the same way anymore. And it's to do with that regionality. It's to do with the fact that not everything happens all at one time. It's not like everybody wakes up one morning and says, great, it's the Neolithic today. Um, so what that means is that without understanding much more about that granularity about what's going on around, around the, the island, it's very difficult for us to fully appreciate the relationship between those tomb types. I suppose the main difference today is that we have lots more scientific techniques at our disposal, so ancient DNA analysis, stable isotope analysis, radiocarbon dating. Because the bones are under extreme pressure or a great degree of pressure, they're kind of remoulding and it's warping the shape, so these are two kind of real 
telltale signs of traction. The kind of work I do with remote sensing, the very east of the country is essentially flattened. There are a huge number of monuments that, that would have been there but are just completely gone. And that's just because of, of heavy agricultural impact. We should be looking for other examples of living societies today to try and um, to try and vary our narratives, I suppose, and not assume we can plant a kind of modern version of our kind of urban Western society back onto the communities that would have built these monuments. They definitely have a role still within communities. People still see them as very special places. So, so it has been internationally recognised that these are part of outstanding universal value and of importance to kind of humanity as a whole. Even though these structures are thousands of years old, only time will tell what other secrets these stones may reveal about this island's lost history.